Dr. Bill Adams here, and this is No Spin Live. We're gonna be talking about, is your surgeon watching porn in the OR? The truth about plastic surgery chains. A Chinese college bans plastic surgery patients from enrollment, and a model calls for a tax break for cosmetic surgery. And we've got a great team of experts in plastic surgery for you, starting with Dr. Ned Schneider from Austin, Texas, Dr. Theo Naomi from Charlotte, North Carolina, and last but not least, Dr. Jason Posner from Boca Raton. We're gonna get right into it. So, Jason, let's start with you. You know, this first story came to us um, from LA. Crazy stuff goes on in LA, but this is uh, Beverly Hills plastic surgeon is accused of watching porn while performing surgery. What do you think? Uh, you know, this sounds crazy to me. Watching porn during surgery, I mean, you know, our, our goal is to concentrate on the patient. You know, we don't have any videos running during surgery of anything. Most of us have music running. So it sounds like a disgruntled patient or employee or someone in the practice trying to besmirch this guy's name. But if he is, I mean, he needs to hook out of there fast if he's a crazy person watching, watching porn. So, I mean, it's nothing that we would ever even think of doing in surgery. It's just a crazy topic to even be debating. I'm not sure that the that any of the allegations have merit, but we don't really have any way to know just from the article that we that, that we read or the or the news blast that uh, that makes it on television. But it's totally it's totally ridiculous concept that, to think that, that that is acceptable to watch pornography in the operating room. It's just not what it's just not what plastic surgeons almost anywhere would be doing. Theo, do you think that you know they did that study one time and they looked at music in the operating room and if and if the surgeon if they played music the surgeon preferred or liked, their like whole biorhythm and their heart rate was lower and they were calmer. And it was actually shown to be a, a positive, you know, indicator for, for almost performance in the OR, but this sounds like a little bit beyond that, don't you think? Oh, I think this is outlandish and ridiculous. You know, it sounds like this patient's just really upset at this doctor because she probably got a botch job and all of a sudden she wants to blame it on porn. In reality, you know, most people are so focused on the procedure. I mean, being this aroused during surgery, it just doesn't even sound plausible. What do you listen to during during surgery? What kind of music? Usually we listen to, you know, classic rock's really big in ROR. I like kind of, uh, kind of the old classic rock hair bands, you know, stuff like that. How about you guys, Theo? Yeah, you know, I'd probably lose my uh, my man card for this, but uh, Adele, you know, good Adele keeps <laughs> me right. keeps the hand nice All and steady. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mine probably sounds a lot like Bill's does. It's a lot of classic rock. We listen to some modern rock and some other stuff too. We kind of mix it up. Yeah. You Jason. know, it's funny. We used to listen to Eminem during lipo cases, but then like the staff didn't like it. But mostly classic rock. You know, like we listen to Satellite, but sometimes they get into like a little heavy metal stuff. And I can't stand it. It drives yeah. me crazy when they're all. At. All right. Well, let's get on the next story. This this was actually it was it's kind of like a blog post basically by a plastic surgeon, but. Um, we found it interesting because, you know, kind of addressed the whole thing of, of plastic surgery chains, which there's some out, you know, they've had Lifestyle Lift and some other ones that are out there, liposuction clinics. Um, so there's some, I thought, relatively interesting insights. And apparently this, this person actually had worked at one of those clinics. But Ned, I'm going to start with you. What, 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 what was your take? Oh, I thought it was great. The perspective is, is unique, meaning that most of us haven't done all of those things that she is done. One, obviously been a plastic surgeon in private practice, worked in a um, in a chain plastic surgery center, and then even was a patient in a chain plastic surgery center. She gave one and gave some pretty good advice in the sense of just looking for, for red flags, things that we should all be, you know, that all patients should be aware of and should be sort of looking out for. Yeah. Theo, what do you think? You know, like I always say, you know, discount plastic surgery is like discount sushi. It may work out. <laughs> if it doesn't, you got a big problem. <laughs> I thought this article really kind of gave a unique perspective. You know? Sometimes people are coming in and they're like, well, this guy's charging this. And you got to ask yourself, well, why is there a discount? And something this important, do you really want to gamble on it? I thought it was a good article and I commend it for being able to shed that kind of light because I think patients oftentimes don't see both sides of the coin. So good article. I worked at a place like that when I first went into practice for about a year and a half. So I have that perspective about that versus private practice. And I agree with the article wholeheartedly. At these clinics, most of the time, you're either going to find young plastic surgeons who are just out there looking for some cases. And it was a lot of cases early on that I got a lot of experience. 
but you're also going to find some older guys who are just not cutting it in private practice and going to this. So you're not really finding the best of the best because Bill and I have both been in practice like 20 years. And look, just as an example, my breast dog today is not a breast dog I did 20 years ago. I mean, I'm down to thinking about millimeters versus back then it was a whole different world. Those are some good insights. So, all right, let's move on this this next story. This is on um, this is a Chinese art college that basically banned applicants. Anybody that had any kind of plastic surgery, any even a non-surgical procedure, were banned from being able to be admitted to this this college. So this is a little over the top, but what do you think? I want to see the entrance paperwork. I mean, what does it say? What what do you have to write down everything you've done and all these kind of things? I mean, it's. Uh, I, I read the article. I, was, I thought it was just a little insane. Um, but first of all, in the U.S., you know, you can't ask those kind of questions. You know, you can't ask what you've had done. Those are violations of our privacy. Yeah. So I would just say everybody should lie when they're applying to art school. Theo, what do you think? Yeah, I think this app, this sounds ridiculous to me. Uh, you can't look at somebody's external appearance and judge their ability, especially in an art school. They may be very talented and, and just look a certain way. Uh, what's next? Are they going to say people shouldn't wear makeup, you know, when they come to class? Or, or, or you know, do you have to wear your, your hair a certain way? I think this is just over the top. What about a tattoo? You had a tattoo? Is that exactly. cosmetic surgery? Or suppose exactly. now I took off the tattoo. You know, yeah. you had your wife's, you had your boyfriend's name on your arm and mm -hmm. you're no longer with him and I took it off. That's no good. I mean, yeah. Ah. yeah. Where do you draw the line? It's, I don't, I don't totally understand the, the rationale for, for it all, but there must be a, a climate that's, that's gravitating towards looking different than what people wanted to look like. It's motivating this, this change. I don't really understand where the, where the rules, what inspired this rule. No, no, no more art school for us in China, right? So, uh, all right, this last story is, comes out of Australia. This is actually a model, but she was saying that, you know, modeling, um, they have to do certain things about having procedures to enhance their marketability and that it should be a tax break. So, Jason, you're, you're from uh, the tropics of Florida. What do you think? I don't know. I think we should. Look, I'd be happy if all our procedures were tax deductible. It'd be hel <laughs> it'd help us. I mean, I think we should all write President Trump and, like, <laughs> get this passed on the next, uh, on the next budget. I mean, it would be great for us. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, cosmetic surgery is kind of a personal decision. I don't think that it should be something that is that – is motivated for a professional for a professional purpose yeah. doesn't mean that some people don't do don't do procedures and certainly do don't do upkeep for beauty for professional reasons but i think that it, the spirit of having most cosmetic surgery should be a personal decision and not a professional you know they, they had the opposite for a while in some states like new jersey put a cosmetic tax that's right had a tax a few yeah. years ago i mean that didn't yeah, really pan out well yeah so if they're proposing a cosmetic tax why not a tax break you know yeah. if if her ability to earn a living is based on how good she looks and the better she looks in certain ways, she can get more work. Why not have it as a tax write-off? In the same way they would tax it, why not have it as a tax break? I don't think it's too crazy. <laughs> I like the way you think, Theo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, listen, hey, guys, that's some uh, some great insights. I'm sure our viewers have enjoyed it. And if you want to see more of this, you can see it on the PlasticSurgeryChannel.com.